Well, do you think it's possible there could be a plausible explanation for all this? We're waiting for it. Okay. He's but, dismissing well, possible, this. But it's possible. Well, there's a, there's a plausible explanation for everything. Okay. But this governor, you know, is trying to dismiss this story in hopes that it'll go away. But what he won't address is the facts. And the facts are, one, Snyder's cousin's furniture was shielded from cuts. We know that. Two, fact is, Snyder's cousin's contract doubled a year later to $41 million, even as education was being cut. Fact three is the NERD Fund communicated with Nixon about cousin, his, Snyder's cousin's concerns, and there was intervention. Snyder owes an explanation, not a dismissal. Today I'm going to detail for you a scandal that reveals hypocrisy reaching directly into the governor's office. A scandal that is serious and disturbing, that is a serious and disturbing breach of public trust. Disclosures, disclosures of emails obtained under the Freedom of Information Act show that Rick Snyder's nerd fund was used to secretly lobby to protect a major Snyder campaign donor and George Snyder, the governor's cousin from proposed state budget cuts passed by the Senate in 2011 that would have impacted their new furniture contract with the state and could have cost them more than $18 million. Email communication between Rich Baird and other Snyder administration officials suggests not only a successful intervention on state contracts to help a Snyder family member and a major Republican contributor, but also reveal a pattern and practice of official behavior that reflects hypocrisy, a double standard, and violations of the public trust. Here's what happened. As, a, as classroom funding was being cut by nearly a billion dollars and retirees and working families were told by the governor they must shoulder a $1.42 billion tax increase, Rick Snyder's closest advisors, advisors were working to make sure that a $19.2 million state contract for new office furniture was protected. Protected from even Republicans in the state Senate. Protected for the benefit of Rick Snyder's cousin, George Snyder, a and a furniture company, Hayworth, whose well-connected owners and their associates, along with Snyder's cousin, have showered Rick Snyder and Michigan Republicans with more than $667,000 in political contributions. George Snyder and Hayworth weren't the only campaign contributors who benefited from intervention by the NERD Fund in a state contracting process that Governor Snyder has insisted must be governed uh, with, by impartiality. During the same period, Rich Baird and Budget Director John Nixon were in communication about protecting George Snyder and Hayworth's state contract from any sacrifice. They were also intervening on behalf of contributor Steve Tretchup and his company Integrated Strategies, which ended up with a $2.2 billion Department of Corrections contract. I want to walk through the email chain that we've got up here on the stage, uh, I'm sorry, on the screen. All this comes to light based on documents obtained through our FOIA. Other documents show that one, George Snyder's company, DBI Interiors, was part of a $19.2 billion, uh, I'm sorry, $19.2 million Hayworth state furniture contract. On April 13, 2011, George Snyder contacted Rich Baird of the Nerd Fund with an urgent request for help dealing with Senate cost-cutting legislation that aimed, at, that aimed to curtail state expenditures on office furniture. A mere six minutes later, after George Snyder's email requesting help arrived at his desk, Rich Baird sent an email to Chief Deputy Director of the State Budget Department asking her to call him regarding concerns about the Hayworth furniture contract. Then on April 26, 2011, in the midst of the state's billion dollar plus de budget deficit and massive cuts to education, the Michigan Senate passed the general government budget. That budget bill proposed a cap of $1 million on the purchase of office furniture by the state and limiting it to refurbished furniture. This cap would have directly impacted Hayworth, whose $19.2 million contract was the only contract the state uh, with this, who was the, who was the only contract with the state for new office furniture, according to George Snyder, who made it clear in an email to Baird three days later that something needed to be done. George Snyder said in an April 29 email to Rich Baird, quote, we are very upset and nervous about the language in the Senate budget bill on furniture. Any advice on, how, on who I can discuss this with, end quote. Minutes later, Baird assured the governor's cousin that everything would be taken care of. Quote, John Nixon's people are on this, sit tight, end quote. At 1045, Budget Director Nixon quickly confirmed that George Snyder's Hayworth problem was a high priority. 
Nixon quickly confirmed to Baird, quote, we are on this, end quote. Then, fast forward to May, uh, May 12, 2011, George Snyder and Hayworth's $19 million, problem, $19 million problem went away when the State House passed its budget without, uh, without the office furniture cuts proposed by the Senate. The office furniture cuts were also nowhere to be found when the legislature passed the final budget that was signed into law by Governor Snyder in June. So while classrooms are being cut by a billion dollars and seniors and working families are having their taxes raised under the guise of shared sacrifice, Governor Snyder's cousin and his big financial supporters at Hayworth would not be asked to share any of the burden for the state's massive debt. In fact, to add insult to injury, this $19 million contract not only escaped any cuts, but actually ballooned to $41 million a little over a year later, even as new taxes on seniors and families were entering full swing. I wonder if a senior is struggling with the make ends meet or a parent whose kids uh, are in classrooms that are being cut, like the idea uh, of that part of the sacrifice is going to pay for Governor Snyder's $41 million furniture contract to his cousin. I want to talk quickly here about the campaign contributions and the NERD fund. Um, here are the facts that came from the campaign finance documents filed with the Secretary of State. Prior to April 2011, Rich Baird, um, uh, prior to April 2011 and Rich Baird's intervention, George Snyder and other DPI officials had, had contributed $5,441 to Rick Snyder's campaign. But after escaping the budget acts, DBI officials were feeling much more generous, contributing $9,915 to the Snyder campaign, almost doubling their contributions. Hayworth political contributions included $34,200 to Rick Snyder's campaign and a $25,000 contribution to Snyder's federal nonprofit, The Governor's Club. Hayworth connected family members and officials given, have given at least $592,000 to Michigan Republicans. That much we know. What we don't know is whether or how much money Hayworth Incorporated officials, George Snyder and others at DBI may have contributed to the NERD slush fund because contributions to that fund remain secret. The governor still refuses to disclose NERD fund contrib uh, contributors and today we may be seeing one of the reasons why. The NERD fund appeared to be acting as a secret lobbying organization through Rich Baird, one of the governor's most trusted advisors. While most businesses must seek state contracts through the normal, transparent, and accountable uh, official process managed by civil servants, the NERD Fund's involvement here with the Hayworth contract and at least one other state contract suggests, suggests that there was also another secret behind the scenes process that only select Michigan businesses could access. And while other businesses and their agents who seek to influence state government must file lobby agents and lobbyists and publicly disclose their spending and activities why is it that Governor Snyder's NERD Fund and Rich Baird operate outside the system of public accountability? Why? We are clearly seeing there is something to hide, and it may be the tip of the iceberg. The letter asks, asks U.S. Attorney uh, Miles to launch a, an investigation into possible violation of federal corrupt practices laws. These laws uh, criminalize activity that may involve uh, either uh, uh, corrupt practices, um, pay-to-play schemes, or payment for influence, influence buying, uh, involving state officials. Uh, you probably have heard of these laws. There is the Hobbs Act, there is the Wire Fraud Act, there is the Program Bribery Act, which for example criminalizes the offer and receipt of value to influence a decision or an action by a state official. All of these laws apply to officials in Michigan's government. The evidence that has been uncovered through the FOIA request reveals that uh, there are serious questions about whether these federal criminal laws may have been violated by state officials and by private parties and favored interests who used their influence to try to get favors and advantages through these state officials. We are also investigating 
whether there may have been a violation, violation of the state lobbying act. As Rich Baird, in our view, was acting as a lobbyist without having registered and reported under the lobby act. Now all of the questions raised here are compounded by the secret nerd fund because this nerd fund paid Rich Baird while he was engaged in the activities that have been documented here. It's been reported uh, through tax returns that the nerd fund raised $1.3 million in 2011 the same time period when these events took place. And as we all know, and is, has been the subject of numerous complaints over the years, Governor Snyder has insisted that the NERD Fund's donors are going to be kept secret and will not be revealed to the public, despite demands and outcry for disclosure. Thank you.